hello view candy here and welcome back to another episode of city skylines and last time out we built our prison complex on an island the jeffrey tinney penitentiary the oridan jails whatever you want to call it but yeah i think it turned out pretty nice here with our communal kind of rehabilitation gardens which i thought was a nice little touch and you may have noticed these props actually disappeared when i was doing the detail and overview but they have magically reappeared actually without me needing to reinstate them so I'm quite pleased about that but yeah i think it turned out pretty nice with the downtown in the background and the port in between those red cranes sticking up and the oil smoke stacks as well really like how that turned out and we'll be keeping Oridan safe now that we can lock up all of its criminals far away on an island and there were lots of suggestions that you made that we will be making in future streams like a little lighthouse on the peninsula a few other suggestions but yeah we'll do that on a live stream coming very soon but for today we are going to be turning our attention finally to the airport build so the plan for the airport is to use this piece of land here it is quite a large space so we have lots and lots of space to play with We'll be putting in a passenger airport and a cargo airport. However, we'll just be doing the passenger one today. The cargo airport will be in the next episode, so have a look out for that. There's just too much detail in, and there are too big a spaces involved with these for me to cram both of those into one episode. So I will be splitting them out. But yeah, this is what we're going to be doing. We're finally adding the airport. We'll finally get some planes over the skies of Oridan. Hopefully, anyway, if my outside connections play ball. But that is the grand plan for today. So let's start off by diving into Google Earth for a little bit of inspiration. So here we are in Google Earth and we are actually at Newcastle Airport, Newcastle in the north of the UK. So funny little story for you, I grew up in Northumberland and used to drive past this airport all the time. And when I was a kid, I used to see the air traffic control tower and that was where I wanted to work. So yeah, a bit of information for you, maybe for you candy, wanted to be an air traffic controller. <laughs> But well, this is actually the airport that we are going to be using for inspiration today. And we will, of course, be adapting it to what we can do in City Skylines, but also extending it out to make it slightly, slightly bigger than it is at the moment. But this is the type of thing I want to do. It's a relatively rural type of airport, small. We're not going massive with this. There's tons of airport builds that you can find on YouTube, which are massive and extravagant. That is not what we're going to be doing today. So sorry if that disappoints some of you. But we are going to be doing a good sized international airport, but just keeping it relatively small. So we'll be taking inspiration from this in terms of the layout of the main terminal here and where the plane depots are, but also a lot of this prop detailing as well. And like some of this just looks like junk. So this is going to be pretty hard for me to do because this is like organized chaos, but it all looks very, very open. We just got random sets of stairs piled up here. Lots and lots of like trolley carts and the such like a few containers all kinds of things. It even looks like bits of rubbish here and there. But yeah, lots and lots of trolley carts and kind of that sort of thing lying around. So this is the type of thing that we will be doing with our airfields as well. And also I'd like, just like to point out over here, we also have this fueling station, which somewhat looks like the one actually in City Skylines. But yeah, we'll also be taking inspiration from that. And also this just massive, massive extent of car parks, which is insane. Like we're not going to be putting this much into our Oridan airport just simply because it just won't be used in city skylines, but we will be putting an absolute shed ton of car parking in, no doubt. Then we also have these little hotel complexes over the side, got a little premiere in here, another hotel around this side too. So yeah, lots of different ideas that we can take from this. And also the road layout coming in here, this one way system going all the way around, around outside the front, different bus stops and the such like. Really also like this kind of arched roof sticking out here as well. So I'll be trying to do something a little bit with that today too. But yeah, this is what we will be taking inspiration from. So this is the type of style of airport that you can expect. Pretty small, but still an international airport that's able to carry some really big jumbo jets. So we are going to be using the airports DLC airports to create our airport today. I wonder how many times I'm going to say airport throughout this episode. <laughs> and I will be walking you through the steps that are needed in order to create that as well. So the first thing that we do need to do is draw in an airport district, an airport area. And the biggest thing to note with this is that it is going to flatten your terrain. So before we do anything, let's have a look at the terrain. And thankfully, Oridan is on a really pretty flat map, so there's not very many big terrain changes within this area. But there are a few. Certainly, this highway is on raised up land compared to the front of the coastline here. But I think for me, I don't want this coastline to be raised any higher. So we're going to be taking this point 
as the point that we are going to use for the height of our airport. So from here, we can just start clicking out from this point and generating our airport district. And I'm going to make this absolutely <laughs> ginormously massive. And it's going to be far bigger actually than it needs to be. But I just want to make sure that we are encompassing all areas of our airport that we need to within this. So that is why I will be doing this. And you'll see already we're getting some really nasty ridges at the edge. Now you're going to have to bear with this because I will sort that out with some smoothing and some landscaping further along in the process. But to start off with, it is going to look very, very jaggedy indeed and pretty rough. But we need to just bear with it. So let's get in our airport area. And I'm going to bring this actually almost right up to the highway here. We'll bring this bit in a little bit closer. We want to create some layers of height, I think, within the forecourt to the airport. But let's just drag that in for now. So there we go. We have prepared our airport area. So the next thing that we do want to do is then come in and put in a runway. So I am going to start with the runways because they are ultimately the largest thing within the airport. They take up an awful lot of space. We want to have a realistic size runway. Now with the airport's TLC, you can draw in actually pretty small ones, just even as small as 54 units. But in reality, that is not long enough to carry planes and looks kind of silly. So we are going to be going for a kind of sort of realistic length of runway for big jumbo jets and big international planes to be taking off from. So I'm going to aim for 220 for our first runway here. So we'll be taking that almost right up to the highway. So my idea is that the planes will take off here and head over this highway. So when you're driving along this highway, you'll see the planes flying overhead. It'll be quite a nice little aesthetic, I think, there. Obviously, we're far enough away from the downtown that kind of flying over the downtown isn't really the best option here. The planes will just turn immediately in the air. So I think that this gives us a nice little effect of the planes taking off over the highway there. Now, I do also actually want to put in a second runway here, and that will be mainly for our cargo airport, but we want to make sure that we are allowing enough space for it. So again, with this one, we are going to make sure that the planes are taken off kind of up and over the highway, over the all area here. So we'll be dragging out a length and I think we're going to go for a short, slightly, slightly shorter one for this. We'll be going for a few 10 units like that. And I just want to make sure we're leaving enough space for our cargo airport there. We might need to adjust this over a little bit. So actually I will re-angle that and we'll reposition it round to about here. Yeah, the grand plan is that the cargo airport will sit in this side. It will have its own highway junction as well off this side. Um, and any other road infrastructure can always come around the end of the runway down this side. So it could be a nice like, little viewing platform point for people from this point, watching those planes take off over their heads ultimately and onwards to wherever their destination may take them. But that is how we are going to position our two runways. Okay, so the next thing that I do want to do is have a little think about taxiways. Now within our airports area tab, if you've got the airports DLC, you then go to the landing area and aircraft stands and you have your taxiways. Now the only way that you can format these is you need an out from the end of the runway here and an in from this way. And that's what you must have in order for this to function properly. So we must have a taxiway that joins into the runway here and we must have one that exits it this side. Now we could of course join this up from both sides and bring it down round the side here. Um, we haven't actually left too much room for that in order to like transfer them from runway to runway, but realistically a plane's not going to be landing here and then taking off from another runway immediately. It's going to be coming into our airport. So what we will do is we'll just join this up for now so that that's forming a nice circle. And then what we'll need to do is bring it into our main terminal from this side. And we will also do the same thing over here and then that gives us a nice taxiway structure alongside of our airport runway. And because we're modded, we do have the luxury of surface painter, so we can come in and tidy up some of these areas during the detailing time lapse. But these taxiways then need to be connected up to our main concourse and our aeroplane stands. So the next thing I'm going to do is come onto our concourse. So I'm going to be using the modern style of concourse. There's three that you can choose from. You've got ultra modern, which is very swish indeed. You've got the classic, which looks a little bit older, a little bit more classic style of airport there. And then you have the modern, which is what we are going to use as the main functioning airport today. I'm going to be doing a few tips and tricks to make it aesthetically pleasing using one of the other types of airport too. But this will be the main one that we work with. 
Now, the other thing to note when you're choosing an airport terminal is there are three different types. Now, you will have to go through the levels in order to unlock these types. You'll only start with the basic one, but because I have unlocked all somewhere during the journey through Oridon, I have got now got open access to all of them. So for our main terminal building, I'm actually just going to be using the basic one. Now, it doesn't come with any attractiveness, I would add, and you need attractiveness in order to level up your airport area. Now, the main modern large terminal, which comes in a kind of triangle format, that does give you attractiveness. So just important to note that if you need extra attractiveness, you could use this style of terminal. But actually for what I want and for the kind of relatively basic international airport design that we're going to be going for, I'm just going to use the very simple modern airport terminal. Now, in terms of positioning, we want to allow enough space in front of this for our road network, for parking, for hotels, that type of thing, public transit as well, all of these important aspects. So I'm going to position this right about here for now. We may have to adjust it, so let's see how we go. We'll position that one out there, and then what we want to do is grab our concourse. And immediately we now actually have an official airport area. We'll obviously come on to a name uh, for that in due course. But for now, let's grab our concourse so we can start extending this out. And so you can go in any direction you want. You can obviously snap onto the endpoints here. Now, what I want from what's seeing at Newcastle Airport is a part of the concourse that extends backwards like this. So we are just going to do that uh, by 49 units like so. And then I am going to start to extend this out a little bit further and then start to bend this round. Now, important to note as well aesthetically that when you join in a concourse at a 90 degree angle or any other angle, in fact, it is going to give a little bit of tearing in the roof structure, which is one thing I really don't like, but it happens. And I've got a way that we can cover this up a little bit too. So now I'm just going to push this airport concourse back a little bit. So we're actually just going to drop this back here and you'll see why in just a second. I'm going to drop this back to this level and then I'm going to continue it on out this way. And we'll just do a little bit for now. So I think 10 units. And we'll come back to that bit in a second. But here, what I do want to do is then create quite a nice little smooth-ish bend for this area. And now all of the concourses do need to be properly attached to your terminal. Of course, you could draw in a concourse like this and use Move It to position it wherever you want to position it, ultimately. So you could drag it in and extend it out like this if you wanted it directly outside the main terminal. However, it's not going to really function properly, I don't believe. I think they actually all have to be connected. So that's why we've done this design. But because I want this kind of centralization aspect to it, I'm going to do a little trick with Move It. And we are going to take the classic airport terminal, again, just the low level one. We'll place this down. And then with Move It, if you hold Alt, you can see I can click on segments here and then I can delete them using Move It. So I'm going to just delete out that front row. I'm also going to hold Alt and delete out the concourse from this. So what we are left with is very simply the main terminal building, which actually this classic one, I think is quite attractive. And I have discovered as well through my planning that it also looks quite good when blended in with the modern airport concourse. So that is what we're going to do here. I'm just going to spin the sun round so we can see this a bit more nicely on the front. There we go. A little bit more light there. So what we're going to do is we are going to merge it into the side of this modern concourse here and hope that we've got this positioned right here, that this comes out almost centrally to the back of it. And then you can see out the front as well, we've got a little bit of clashing going on here. So let's do a bit of bob work and we'll bob off those car parking spaces for starters from both the modern terminal and also from our classic terminal here. Ultimately, don't really want people parking in those spots anyway. And there is a little bit of grass overspill, so we could attempt to bob some of that off as well. So let's go into our trees. Yeah, we have got the tall grass cluster there. I wonder if there's any other instances that doesn't appear to be. So let's just remove that. And that helps to make that front a little bit neater. But I think those two buildings do actually go together quite well. Like the brick is the same colour and then it just adds a little bit of extra height into our terminal. Just for aesthetic purposes, it's not really going to be functional because it's not actually connected into the concourse. But I do think that that looks quite nice and it helps to hide that tearing in the main concourse there as well, which I do quite like. So that's the main terminals this side. And then over this side, what I do want to do is add in a second terminal. So this is where we're kind of extending on from what we saw in Newcastle Airport and giving us a little bit more layers of heights and more terminals to play with. And we are going to use the two-storey terminal for this, which will give us a bit more excitement in terms of our road network out the front as well. 
And it's quite a grand building, really nice with the arrivals on the bottom and the departures on the top. And the bus lanes as well built in, which I really like the aesthetic of. And then after we've placed that in, we will then just extend the concourse on just a little bit further. We'll go to, yeah, I think we'll have 11 units there, that side. So now the final thing I want to do before we start thinking about road networks is actually where we saw Newcastle Airport, that really nice arched roof. What I'd like to do here is incorporate a bus station. So there is one that comes with the airport's DLC, which attaches really nicely to the concourse. However, I'm not super keen on the aesthetic of this. It's very extravagant and takes up quite a lot of room so what i'm actually going to do is just revert to the vanilla bus station that comes with the after dark dlc and we will be placing this one in instead so i'm just going to drop it in there for now against that road and then what we will do is spin this around and we're actually going to merge it into the side of the concourse here so we get that really nice curvy roof effect and then what I do want to do to just check the distance of this as well is grab our road and we're just going to grab a basic two lane road for now and we'll worry about our road networks, one way systems, etc. in a second. Yeah, that fits in quite nicely there. So kind of satisfied with that distance away from the concourse. So before I get onto the plane stands and drawing in those taxiways to and from the plane stands, I am now just going to put in our main road network for the front of the airport here to make sure that this is in the correct position, that we've left enough room for our car parks and our road network, etc. out the front. So I'm going to go ahead and do that in a time lapse and I'll be right back.
there we have our road network and we have just put in a really kind of like it's a it's a little bit of a dodgy intersection over here but it functions and it works we've got a simple in onto the roundabout this side and then out this side which helps with traffic flow if you put it this way round. so we've got a roundabout going clearly anti-clockwise here so we want to have the out before you hit the in to prevent any of that extra traffic from crossing over but it does all seem to work the bridge over the top and the tunnel underneath in the opposite direction this bridge is a little bit janky so we need to do a little bit of work on just trying to get that a bit smoother we'll obviously come through with a lot of intersection marking tool as well and i've just noticed the slope there so we can slope that out right now yeah we'll come through with a bit of intersection marking tool when it comes to the detail and time lapse and just tidy up a lot of these junctions make them seem a lot nicer make sure we've got people you know not crossing over lanes etc that sort of thing i have used bus roads throughout so we've got this nice bus avenue that spans the top of it and this is clearly on the upper layer so down here we will have tons and tons of car parking some office space a couple of hotels dotted in there as well car rental all the kind of things that you would expect to see at the airport will be in this bottom part which we will come on to but it is essentially just a big one-way system so if you're coming in from this side you can come around and down into these front terminals you can also get into this car park this side and back out which flows with the traffic so the in is actually before the out the direction that we're going in there we also have this entrance into the car park from this side and clearly if you're coming up this road then you're going on to the second terminal i'm going to call that terminal two over here and terminal one being this one this would be the entrance into terminal two up to the top side there and then you can come in the one-way system all down the bottom so you can get out easily this way and loop back around to the roundabout to exit easily or you can continue on we've got another entrance in to terminal two over this side if you're coming in from this highway you can take the avenue down and round into it that way and then just a nice long exit out and we'll have a few hangers in the such light lined up along here this should be quite a nice little drive i think past the end of the runway and those hangers in that detailing kind of area but everything flows round pretty well we've done a bit of no controller work on some of these junctions where the tram lines cross uh, which will help with the traffic flow so it's all just one node here essentially rather than having two really close together with the tram crossing and then of course i've added in the tram line which runs from one end to the other so it can take you between terminals we'll also have train coming in over here as well so that can have an easy access to the tram terminal there to take you to whatever terminal you need to go to but one thing I noticed when I was putting in the roads is this terminal here and how dangerous is this edge. But also the fact that this is absolutely screaming out for a path connection. And I've absolutely no idea if this is going to work, but I am going to try and put in a path connection here. And I'll just add, I've paused the game because our money is going to drain down very quickly with an airport in that's not bringing us any money because it's not open or functioning yet. So that is why I have done that. So if we go to elevated path what i'm going to do is draw up a path from this side and we'll take it we'll take it to 10 meters from now up to yeah about there we'll see what height that is and then i'm going to connect it into an invisible path so what i do want to do is make sure that this is the right height before i do that so let's just get this down and that doesn't look too bad let's align it up with the end nicely as well in fact we can leave a little bit of a gap either side we could use a tiny bit of node controller here actually to stretch out that node just a little bit if we go to more options here and just make that slightly wider so that it fills that entire gap yeah and that's a bit nicer and then let's also as well just so that this is looking super neat bring this down and we can stretch that out actually to the same amount so that was 112 so let's do the same to this lower node so that it's nice and straight all the way down just like that and that is then connected into the end of the tram terminal here we'll make sure there's a crossing there is a zebra crossing actually here so we'll make sure that people can cross over and out as well but now for the top bit yeah if we get our invisible pathways and just draw out a straight bit then we end up with quite a nice connection here i think so we just want to shift this up a tiny bit so it's super in line with the edge of this terminal and again like i said i've absolutely no idea if people will actually use this and this will actually function but i think aesthetically wise it makes sense to have a path there so that is why we are doing it okay so that looks pretty good to me and then what i am going to do is do exactly the same thing the other side yeah there we go so i think <laughs> i think that works quite nicely as an aesthetic whether it actually functions or not is a different matter but at least we have got walking pathways down from that departures top terminal so they can get out into car parks and the such like 
without having to walk all the way around these raised roads there. So I feel like that. Hopefully they'll use it and that will actually help from that perspective. Okay, so the next thing I do want to do is start placing in the plane stands. So if we go back to our airport area and we click on the landing area and aircraft stands, here we have a few different sizes. So we've got a cargo one, which we won't touch. Obviously for now, we'll put that in the cargo airport, which is going to go over this side of the area over there. We do have a large aircraft stand, medium and small. So we will be using a combination of all of these within our build today. So I think what we're going to do here is we're going to line them up nicely along this concourse and then wrap some of them around the end here. And for that, we kind of want the smaller ones, I think. So what I'm actually going to do is use the medium stands at this bottom end. So we'll just plop in a few of these and I'm going to try my best to get these lined up. So really what I'm looking at here is the taxiways to make sure that they are relatively aligned and equal. I will give them quite a nice spacing here as well. We don't want these too cramped. So what I'll do is try and line up the edge of that kind of red line with the edge of the concrete here, which gives quite a nice spacing. And then hopefully that'll mean that we can get them nice and equal either side. And then what we will do is transfer to small aircraft stands. I'm actually just going to adjust this node back just a little bit. So we've got a slightly smaller end. And then I'm actually going to get a node controller as well and stretch this out. I feel like it gives a nicer aesthetic if it's a little bit wider. I think we will just go to 150%, which just kind of helps to round off this end just a little bit, I think. So we'll grab our small aircraft stands and we'll start to place these in around. Now we're going to want to use Move It to align these nicely, realistically. And it is going to mean that our taxiways are slightly curvy, but I think that that is okay. And actually having a look in real life inspiration as well, there are some which are bendy. They're not all like super, super straight. So I think we can get away with this. So I'm just going to pull these out as well so that they're more aligned with the end of these medium aircraft stands. And they'll still function totally fine just by moving them out just that little bit further like this. And those are indeed aligned to the road. So then that gives us some quite nice straight lines to play with there. Now for our large aircraft stands, I'm actually going to place these at the second terminal over here. So we'll start from the end and we'll just place these in nice and spaced out again to make sure we've got a decent distance for those taxiways. We'll just have four of those in like that. So what it does mean is we've got eight medium, four small and four large, and that'd be our main focus for our airport there. And clearly we'll have lots of detail around this and Lots of different decorative aeroplanes, which you can find in the decorative buildings here. We've got hotels, we've got hangars, we've got just planes as well, which we can sit at down amongst our taxiways. So we will come on to that. But let's now connect this all up. So if we go back to our taxiways, what we do want here is we want to make sure that this in is coming in to all of these aircraft. So let's start off with just join these up so that we get a nice flow around the aircraft stands here. So now this one, we're going to want to bend that. Then we're going to run it down this side so that it creates quite a large loop. And then let's just go to our curvy road so that we can bend these nicely, just like that around the end there. So that all starts to look reasonably neat. And then of course, we do want to connect this up over this side too. So let's actually just draw this in this way because it's going to give us a better alignment like that. And then we'll just need to turn that around to make sure it's all flowing in that through that one way system. So that gives us a nice flow throughout all of our aircraft stands. Now, what we do want to do now is clearly connect it up to the runways. So we're going to have various different access points for this. So here where we're coming around the corner like that, we're actually going to bring an access point straight into the runway that way. So any planes coming down from this side can come straight up, out and onto the runway that way. From here, we'll also give them a bit of an access point across. So from the middle one, so if you're on those two aircraft stands, you can take a quick access route essentially across the airfield to there and then round to get onto that runway that side. Now from this side, they are going to have to take a slightly longer route. So we are going to give this a nice-ish bend at the end here. So we'll do a seven unit by seven unit curve here. Then we'll continue to bring that up to so about there and we'll connect it in that side. Now, all of this is going to need some detailing to help kind of like make it make a lot more sense between. So we will come on to that. But for now, I'm just going to add in a crossroad here. And what we're going to do is we're going to bend this down so that the aircrafts aren't making too much of a steep turn. And what we can do on these as well is use a lot of no controller. 
just to stretch these out and provide a little bit more room. Now coming down from this taxiway, what we are going to do is just create another flow point here. So we're actually going to bring this across and then we are going to curve it round into the top here. The only planes from this side can skip some of this queue essentially to get off. And then we'll do exactly the same thing here. So let's just bring this out straight. And in fact, I've put that in a little bit too early. So let's just move that back. We'll bring that in like that and then let's curve this around. So we're getting it nice and straight into the main taxiway here. So yeah, that's a little bit better. And then let's of course just turn these around so that it's all flowing into the one-way system correctly. So yeah, there we go. That is our main taxiways configured for that particular runway. Now, just to make sure that they can actually access this other runway as well, even though this will really primarily be hooked into the cargo airport, we are going to just bring across a connection here. So we'll make sure that they can get in. And I think we'll do that from here. Bring this across diagonally and then in. What we kind of ideally want to do is turn off road bending there so that doesn't bend, but we can use a move it just to snap that in. And then a little bit of node controller here. Once we've removed some of those extra nodes very close to that particular junction there, use a bit of node controller here and just draw those out and straighten them out, which gives us a much smoother connection. And then just in terms of coming back in, we can also connect them in from this side. So there we have the main shape of our airport. So I guess the next thing that we do want to do is have a look at attractiveness to make sure that we are getting that in so that we can get lots of nice passengers, raise our prices as well when it comes to the airline. When we get to level two, we'll unlock that. And yeah, see how we go. So our expenses at the moment are 12,600 an hour. I'm not sure if that's updated because I've had it paused. I think it may get more than that. I mean, at the moment we were losing 60 grand an hour and I'm just very conscious of our bank balance, which we were making money. So I've had to build that up a bit, but it is swiftly going to go down once we press play with a massive airport that's not being used. So in terms of getting your airport attractiveness up, there are a few different ways to do it. As mentioned, we've got these hangars that we can input. We have got fuel station and they all have various different degrees of attractiveness. So just note that the large hangars have double the attractiveness of the small hangars. Hotels as well, the posh one is a lot more attractive than the small one. But we also have these airline lounges, which we can incorporate into the build. And of course, let's not forget, that we do also have our modern control tower, which we want to place. I definitely want this prime position. And I'm thinking somewhere here. Now it does have to be attached to a concourse. So what I am gonna do is just put in a very, very small piece of concourse, and then we will place that in. And what we can do from there is then just shift this over a little bit so it aligns nicely and makes a bit of sense. But I feel like that's quite a nice spot to it. And then of course the airport lounges as mentioned. So let's definitely get a few of these in. And these are really, really nice aesthetic for overlooking the airport. So I think we'll definitely have a couple of these in here. You can put them quite nicely side by side as well, I would add. But I think I will just go for... In fact, actually, do you know what? We will do that. So let's just merge these in together just a tiny bit so that they are aligned. And then we get this really nice curvy window here. Let's just move the sun round again so that we can actually see rather dark in Oridon. And I do want to get this blue roof to it. So let's just reset that. It goes a little bit better, I think, with the modern concourse and the kind of bluey colour of that. So we make those all the same colours. Then we get these really nice windows overlooking the runway and the airfields there, which I think is, yeah, quite a nice aesthetic. And they have 60 attractiveness, so they're pretty attractive, I would add, to visitors. So I think what we will do is add in a couple of more down this side as well. And then in terms of the fuel station, now I do actually want this situated a little bit further out. I'm actually thinking what we will do is place it down here. Uh, again, so it's kind of overlooked from the edge of the road here. You can kind of look down over the edge of the runway, over the fuel station. It's sort of a little bit like how it was at Newcastle Airport, set quite a way away from the airport as well. So the next thing that I do want to do is add in a train connection into the airport so that we have got some high speed transport right into the heart of Oregon, into the downtown, which can then take them to elsewhere in the city. We will, of course, be adding in buses as well with our bus station there. But I think a train line is super important up to the airport here, at least train or metro. But we're going to go for train in this instance because we're a little bit 
of a distance away from the city over here. So we are going to grab this train line that is coming in from the downtown here that goes round and out to the cruise terminals down to the port here. But what we're going to do is add in an additional line which extends out, which will go through this industrial area, which will be fleshed out by Skidmark Junkyard over here and round and down into the airport. Okay, so now that we've connected up that train line, so we have just made it a sunken rail line all the way through this industrial area, underneath the highway, underneath the road there and round. I'm thinking in terms of the location of the station, what we want is it to be really close to this tram depot here so that people can get off the station and fly over to this terminal via the tram if they need to, or they can easily access the entrance to this terminal as well. So it should be quite a nice little transport hub type area. So we'll bring out a road from this node here just like that and just using a basic road for the moment we'll obviously want to take off parking actually so we might as well upgrade it to grass lined road for now that we haven't got any parking on there and then let's pick a train station so what i'm thinking for this is that actually we'll use the raised train train line station from the content creator pack here the reason being because this rail line here is actually slightly higher up it's up on that upside of the bank there. So if we raise this over here, then that will make a nice, nice connection coming into it, which I think will look all right. And then it can also travel over this road as well, which is important. We don't really want level crossings around the airport because the traffic could get quite busy. Let's go back to our train tracks and we'll connect this one up. So I'm just going to bring this out really simply, nice and straight, and then we'll connect it into this curve here like that yeah it gives us a really really nice smooth connection there and a smooth run in into the station so i think that will work quite well it gives us a little bit of extra parking there too which i don't think is a bad thing around an airport at all okay so before we hit play and we start to actually get some planes flying over the oridon skylines we need to have a little think about the airport and the attractiveness of it so we have at the moment got an attractiveness score of 280 and we only need 200 to get to a level two airport and that's because we've placed in these viewing platforms that's all adding to the attractiveness there but to boost our attractiveness a little bit more what we can do is use some of the assets that come in the airports dlc so there are two big ones which is the airline headquarters building which technically you don't unlock until you reach a level three airport area but because i've got to unlock all on it's kind of cheated and we already have it and we do also have the aviation museum now actually just as a disclaimer, neither of these actually add attractiveness to your airport and they can be placed outside of the airport area as well. So you can place the Aviation Museum wherever you'd want to, ultimately. And same with the airline headquarters building. So you could put it in your downtown. It doesn't necessarily have to be at the airport. But I quite like the aesthetic of it, actually, at the airport. So we are going to include it here. And then for attractiveness, we have all of these parked cargo plane props. But before I get to those, I am going to place the two larger buildings because I want to make sure that they've got their own spaces and their own orientation. So I'm thinking for the airline headquarters, this little space here works really quite nicely for this. And the reason being that as you're driving in, you're coming up over this flyby here, you get a little bit of height, which is going to be in amongst a lot of car parks and a lot of lower rise buildings there. So I think that that adds a nice aesthetic. And as well, if you're driving down this road, which I have now changed to an asymmetric rod ad, they can go in both directions. It adds a really nice corner piece. A little bit of detailing here, a bit of surface painter needed just to make that corner make a bit more sense. But it is a really super nice, attractive building, actually. So, yeah, I definitely think it's one that we want to put up next to this avenue coming down the hill here, adding a bit of height before you have the airport reveal behind it. And then in terms of the Aviation Museum, this is actually a really, really nice asset. I'm going to anchor here in the here just for now so we can take a look at it. Now, it's got all these plane props on it, which I just absolutely love. And if you try and bob them off, unfortunately, you can't. They're not part of the bobbing, so we can't find them with and find it to place elsewhere. Otherwise, I'd definitely have one right in the middle of my roundabout. But what I do want is being that this is the main uh, entrance into the airport, I want people to instantly see those planes. So we're going to just remove these power lines for a second so that they're not in our way and we'll join that up again in a minute and what i'm going to do is i'm going to use move it and i'm going to reposition this so i'm going to ignore that path for a second and i'll show you what we can do to actually get rid of that so that it doesn't cause us any problems what it does mean is that let's spin the sun round as well so we can see it nicely so yeah when we come into the airport here 
we have got these planes instantly and this will be like the first thing that you see is these planes flying overhead as you come around and you drive around into the airport and you pass the back end of the museum here which is super cool with the airplane going into it i would add so yeah really like that positioning for that now with this path here because that's going underneath the road at the moment what we can do is the same trick as we used on the airport terminal We'll hold Alt with Move It and we can select different parts of this path and we'll just delete it out so that that is no longer there and then it fits the shape that we want. There we go, we have fitted it into that little space quite nicely. So I do think that that's a nice entrance into the airport. Okay, so coming back to the hangars and the parked planes, which all add attractiveness to our airports, we are going to put in a few down this side. So we already have the fuel station I'd add over here, which is quite happy about that. We could add in another one. We'll certainly add in another one for the cargo airport side of things. But for now, let's add in a few of these parked planes. So there's a couple of different types of each size. We can kind of mix and match these, I think, would look nice here. And what I will do in the detailing time lapse is come in and add a bunch of props and lines and the such like around these. So I don't want them all super nicely orientated, to be honest. I want them kind of a little bit jumbled up. Uh, we want some clear places where the planes will park, but we do want some little gaps, I think, here and there. And then we'll put in some hangers down here. So the large hangers add double the amount of attractiveness to the small hangers but don't take up dramatically more room, but we are going to mix and match them. So let's add in, I think we'll have a couple of smaller hangers and then another large hanger here with some gaps in between. Don't want it to be super uniform. And then we could also actually squeeze in a small parked plane in the middle of here. And then what I want to do is I want these to be set back fairly close to the road so that when you come in, you can actually like drive past these hangars and these park planes and all this kind of airport inventory type area. And then what you can do with these hangars as well is add planes inside them, which is a really, really nice touch. So I'm definitely going to do that because that's going to help with our attractiveness. We won't do it in every single one, but we will do it in a few. So I think that plane lines up quite nicely like that. Yeah. And then we'll have a couple of smaller planes sitting in these smaller hangars. And I'm actually just going to make sure that this is sort of poking slightly out. So it's not perfectly in the hangar. So that we're getting some different styles and some different looks to the buildings here. We'll make sure a couple of those hangars are empty as well. So yeah, I think like that is going to work well. And that should really help to boost our attractiveness score. Let's just have a little look at what it is now. If we click play for a second. We've got planes coming in. <laughs> I've just seen that. So excited. I'm so excited. Okay, there we go. It's at 630. So that's quite a lot of attractiveness. Quite happy with that for now. Our hotels will also boost that, which will help. If we think back to Newcastle Airport as well, I do also want an area within this that is going to be quite heavily kind of a utility area. So we're going to have tons and tons of stacked props for this. So I've got all of these different types of loading stairs. So we'll stack up a few of these in an area as well that we've got that kind of service area feel to it. And actually now what I'm thinking with this is it might look good if this is right on the end of the terminal here, the kind of holding point. So what I will do is actually shift these up just a little bit so that we've got a little bit more room to play with. And then that gives us our service area in this location here. So quite pleased with that. And we'll use lots of line markings, uh, lots of like stacking up of various different props, as I mentioned, in order to detail that, which will come in the detailing time lapse. And look, we've got so many planes lined up. This is so exciting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, <laughs> eight planes already. Oh, nine. Did I miss that one? I can't remember. We've got a lot of planes anyway coming in and out of the airport already. So this is great. I'm super excited to press play, actually. But just before we do press play, let's also have a little look at what our airline offers us. Also within the airline, there's a few different things that we can modify. So we can modify the logo. Um, I'm thinking we might have to just go for the pink one, you know, <laughs> bit of few candy pink. Why not? And then customize airline color. I mean, again, I'm thinking I'm, I'm just going to have to go for a bit of few candy pink on this for now. If you've got any other suggestions for what you want to see, then please do let me know in the comments. But the big key thing with the airline here as well is the ticket price. So with the ticket price, if you increase it, you'll obviously get more income, which is something you want to keep your eye on because it can be quite expensive. We're already at <laughs> 
19,000. Oh, there we go. We've got nine active flights already in the airport here. But it does reduce your attractiveness. So that's where if we put in some more hotels and the such like around it, that attractiveness score is going to go up. And we can afford to give them a higher price. Now, at the moment, we only need 200 for this airport to level up and we need to have 500 visitors. So let's just increase this a little bit. And we'll, I think we'll increase it to four, around 450 is what I'm thinking of attractiveness. There we go. So that's plenty over and above what is needed to level up the airport. But then also gives us just a little bit more income. Uh, it's giving us projected ticket income of zero at the moment, but that will obviously change over time. And let's just have a little look at policies as well. So hotel discounts, this adds 200 points to the airport's attractiveness, but it does cost $20 per passenger. So that's something to bear in mind. We add a land value bonus to the whole airport. Kind of, I don't know if we necessarily need a land value bonus to it, but that's quite a good feature. And it doesn't cost too much, to be honest, although it's per airport cell and this airport area is particularly large. And then we also have car rentals. So it does add income uh, per passenger per week, but the tourists are more likely to use cars, which may increase traffic. Now, I'm kind of keen for them to use the public transport, to be honest, but it does add income. So I think for now we will stick on the, the car rental policy and we'll see how we go. If traffic gets too bad, then we will cut that right out. OK, so just before we place our hotels, let's just press play and see how it goes. We have got planes all over the place taking off. And yeah, some of them are branded in the UC airline colour or whatever the Oridon airline is going to be called. Oh my goodness, you two are way too close to each other. What are they doing? I would not want to be on that pink plane behind. Oh my God. <laughs> I wouldn't really want to be on the plane in front, to be honest, either. Oh, that's far too close. We'll see how they take off here as well. I'm sure they're going to do some ridiculous 90 degree turn, but let's have a little look. Yes, they absolutely are. There we go. But they do fly out quite nicely over the highway. Oh, they're going to spiral up, in fact. Well, that's just, yeah, that's just bad. <laughs> but there we go. We've got planes flying over Oridon now. That is super exciting. Yeah, <laughs> and we've got another few, several planes here waiting to take off as well. Interesting they're all opting to use that runway as opposed to this one, even though it is hooked in. But we'll see how that goes. OK, so we have got our airport running. Uh, let's just have a little look on how much it's going to drain our money by. So we're getting 14,000 income to 19,000 expenses. Oh, we're almost at the passenger count already, actually, in terms of increasing that. So that is interesting to know. We've got power and water problems. Oh, I didn't rehook in the power line. That would be why. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. We shouldn't have water problems, though. I'll need to check that in just a second. Okay, so hooking in the power lines, I had a very interesting discovery and I've got a slight problem in Oregon where my population keeps spiking to over 800,000. <laughs> you may have noticed at the end of that last clip, if you rewind about 10 or 20 seconds, you'll see the population was on 600 something thousand. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with this, but that's why we're getting power and water problems. So as soon as the population spikes, obviously the city needs power and water. So I'm getting multiple issues with that. And I've left it running for quite a bit now and it keeps spiking back up to the levels and then dropping back down. So I'm going to need to see what on earth is going on there. But on the flip side, we have got quite a nice busy airport going on here. There's tons of planes all like queuing up, it seems. Actually, too many planes almost. Loads and loads of planes spawning, flying in. The skies of Oregon are actually getting quite busy here. <laughs> But anyway, just thinking about the last few things before we get on to detailing, I do want to put in some hotels just to boost that attractiveness. And the other thing that occurred to me as well was the airline name. Now, I had already had a name in mind for this, so I am going to change it now. So we are going to call it the Titan Atlas Airways, and that is after my mod Rich, the Titan Atlas. Thank you so much, Rich, for all of your mad support. Now, some of you who've been watching for a while will know that I forgot to credit him for the Silicon Valley build. So here we go. We are naming the airline after Rich. Thank you so much, so, so much for all of your support. I do still need suggestions for the actual airport name, but Oridon is operated under the Titan Atlas Airways, and I hope you appreciate the pink, Rich. <laughs> now, just getting on to the hotels. So there's two types of hotels that add attractiveness to the airports, and we've got the budget hotel and then also the luxury airport hotel. Now for the budget hotel, I'm actually thinking what I'm going to do is put a couple of them up here on the hillside right next to the junction. They're budget hotels after all, so they should be able to hack the noise pollution from the highway here. But also they actually get quite nice views down over the airport and down over the airline HQ there as well. So I think that's a good position for them. 
So let's just grab our basic normal two lane road for this. And we're just going to bring this out straight across here. I think for now, of course, I've got tree anarchy on, so I need to sort that out. Let's just remove those trees. In fact, we'll remove all of these from here for now. And then we can add our own back in with the new Oridon tree palette as well. So I have actually just flattened out this whole piece of land here so we can put the hotels up there with a little bit of detailing around it. And we'll do some nice rock bank detailing here up against the road there as well. So let's go back in and now grab our hotels, which will now go in nicely. And I'm going to actually put three of them in here because we can make quite a nice little used formation with these. In terms of formation, actually, I think I will spin this around this way. So I'll have this just sitting against the road like so. And then what we want to do is bring car parks out all around it. So there's not going to be a huge amount of landscaping around this hotel. It's going to be pretty basic and simple. So yeah, there we go. So we're putting the car park in spaces and that just gives us quite a nice formation, I think, on top of this hill. So when you're coming down the highway, you can quite clearly see the airport hill there. Coming into the junctions, they're stood nicely up behind the airport. So I think it gives a little bit of height perspective as well. Quite nice in that formation, makes it a little bit bigger and a little bit grander, even though it is the budget hotel, of course. OK, so that is the budget hotels in. And then for the luxury hotel, I do want to bring that into its own complex here. So now one thing we do need to do is feed this road underneath the railway over this side. So let's just trim back this road slightly here and then we'll grab this one again. And let's turn snapping back on and we're just going to bring it straight out under the railway here, which we should have enough clearance for. We'll need to adjust that pillar slightly, but that's absolutely fine. And then let's turn on terrain lines for this. because I want to kind of follow the bottom of this terrain around. This will ultimately be access between the main passenger airport and the cargo airport. So we'll do it when we come to the cargo airport, but we'll also have a connection into this industrial estate underneath the highway here, as well as having another intersection over here too. So we'll just leave that road for now as a bit of a feeder road into our cargo airport. So yeah, that'll do nicely for the time being. So then for the luxury hotel, I think what we will do here, let's have a little look at the terrain again. We will need to do a tiny bit of terraforming just to level out some of this. And I think we won't actually go right up to the highway there. We'll leave it a little bit recessed. So we'll bring it down onto this level. We'll have to move these power lines in a second, which again is absolutely fine. We'll bring out a whole area for this particular hotel. OK, so what I will do for this, I will actually bring it off this same junction here that people can come in from either direction. We'll bring it out like this. And I think what this wants really is actually quite a grand entrance. It's quite a nice fancy looking hotel. And yeah, we can get it really nicely center aligned to this road coming up here. And I definitely want this sloped super nice. So let's go ahead and do that. So it's a nice flat run up right to the middle of this hotel like that. And out the back, we can do quite a bit of detailing, I think, with this. And what we will do as well is make some really nice gardens up the front of it. But then in this side, we definitely want to bring in some more parking for it as well, because that absolutely would be the case. So let's change this to a parking lot road. We'll bring this out to about there. And then I'm going to get actually the largest car park for this and just draw out a segment like so. And we can actually bring that in a little bit closer. We could, of course, as well, actually upgrade this, this type of road so we can get some more kind of VIP parking in the front here. Might be a nice touch, although I would actually like to change the direction of that so that we've got the parking spaces on the hotel side. So yeah, they drive on the kind of mucky dark side. So yeah, that makes a bit more sense to me. So there we go. So I did put in the car park in and I have also actually added in another hotel over here with a little separate car park down the side. Lots of disabled parking access in front, a little bit of kind of VIP taxi parking as, as it were, and nice big car park over this side. So. Yeah, I think that will do for the luxury hotel complex. Obviously, we'll do a lot of detailing around this to make some nice outdoor areas for both of these hotels, shelter it off from that highway and from that dirty industrial area as well, if they're meant to be a little bit more luxurious, and tidy up some of this terraforming around it. So we'll do that all in the detailing time lapse, which I am going to come on to now. So there is absolutely tons to do. We're going to fill this out with car parking and a few different office blocks dotted around here and there. We'll add in a petrol station, car rental service, the other usual things that you would see outside the front of the airport. Of course, an absolute ton of detailing to do around the airport field itself, bringing in that kind of service area with all of the different props that we're going to be using for that. 
lots of line markings and that sort of thing to be done on these plain props in here as well and around this area in particular lots of surface painter and other little details to add in there so yeah this is going to be a big job and it will definitely be an epic detail and time lapse so hold on to your hats and i'll get cracking
Okay, so where to begin, honestly, with all of that? I think we'll start in this corner down here. So we have just added in an absolute ton of parking around the whole place. Actually, you'll see massive, massive car parks up here, car parks in here, squeezed into this space as well. The tons and tons of parking down at both terminals so that there's lots of different options. People tend to be going for these big multi-stories, really. And this car park here is obviously pretty busy. We have got a car rental place in here, just using the Enterprise assets, which I thought was quite cute. And there is some parking available in here, actual functional parking spaces. If people want to come in and park there, but have used a lot of prop cars just to fill that out to make that feel like a proper car rental place. Over in the hotels, we've just done a bit of fencing around here and a nice little bit of flower pattern as we go up the slope towards the main entrance towards the hotel. And then just really a bit of natural detailing around. We've done lots of rock detailing across all of the slopes you'll see around the whole area at the back of the car parks here. And then lots and lots of trees to block the sound. So if you're down here, you're kind of reasonably sheltered from the noise of that or industry area. Just a few benches and lights and the such like. A couple of picnic benches around the back of here, but nothing too significant. We've got just a little garage popped in there. And then as we come down this way, I've put in a couple of little offices and then lots of sort of service buildings here so road maintenance taxi depots several taxi depots i mean we're in vast need of them you'll see when we come around got a bus depot here another office actually a cryo preservatory which i thought sort of blended into this area reasonably well and then we've got police fire recycling and the such like i have also added in helicopter stops here we will have the main helicopter depot over in the cargo airport, which I felt like it was a more appropriate place for it. But once we've got that in, then we will hook that into the other helicopter stop at the racetrack. So we'll get helicopters flying over Oridon at that point. And then as we come down the main road here, we've got lots of taxi ranks uh, where the taxis queue up if they're not busy, but they are always busy. As you'll see, there's people waiting everywhere for taxis down here. It's this literal madness. People pour out of this kind of weirdly flight down out of this tram station here and this train station is just super 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 busy there's a constant flow of people coming in and out of it i've had to increase the number of trains on the route just because it just was not serving all of the people there they were hanging off the end of the platform weirdly here not doing it anymore and just build some little gaps with a bit of natural overgrowth detailing not every little place in this airport is completely landscaped and concreted and that sort of thing and then we've got lots of little smoking kind of areas is what i'm imagining outside the front of the airport here a little bit of tiling decal but very very simple on all of the par car parks as well we have got little entrance barriers obviously raised so the car parks the cars don't go through them but i think that just adds a nice little touch of realism to our car parks and we've used lots of these signs as well to kind of direct people around the airport as they enter into it and of course not forgetting actually we have got the main entrance airport sign here welcome to the airport We've covered all the roundabouts with a bit of IMT, also IMT'd up this junction, filled in those bus lanes as well so that there's consistency there. Same with outside here, we've got rid of all of the node markings and carried on that bus line so it feels much more consistent and realistic there. And then yeah, coming down the front we've just got a little bit of planter action, more taxi depots, this constant string of people coming into the bus station which again some of these bus routes are insanely busy as well so we need to have a look at the capacities on those. Nice little bit of tram stop detailing, typical Oridon detail in there. I did in a couple of hotels here actually, just the vanilla hotel assets with a little arrow just to point people that they can drive around and park around that way. Um, but yeah, I thought that fitted into that space and then a little bit of overgrowth outside the airline HQ here. A few more offices as well just merged together next to the bus station here, which I thought added quite a nice effect. This road down here towards the main entrance to the airport, looking pretty nice actually from street level I think. And then as we come down the main road this way, we've got more of these sheltered kind of sit-in smoking areas, as it were. I'm not sure what that one's doing, actually. That is not meant to be there. <laughs> Let's delete that. Nice little bit of repeated tree pattern alongside the side of the road here. And then it just comes on to very much more of the same around the car parks. Lots of rocks to support that wall there and a bit of fencing as well, I would add, this side with the nice railings, which I thought added a nice touch. And then as we come here, we've got another little garage going up to this hotel complex. We just use one of the normal tourism hotels here with a couple of offices merged into the back of it just to give it a slightly bigger look and feel there. That's in a little small eatery area out the back. And hello, but that is where we need Bob. I had not noticed those. We're going to get rid of the invisible parking spaces there. So those cars will disappear just like that, like magic. 
I've also actually added in a small medical clinic up here as well. We needed a medical station around the airport area, so I've just dotted that in there, which I thought fitted okay, kind of hidden away inside this hotel complex. And then, yeah, again, lots of INT and roundabout detailing just up here. And then that leads me on to the main airport itself. Now we have come in, there's quite a few areas with various different containers dotted around. Some of these small planes as well. A couple of little service huts there, randomly put next to the fuel depot. And then, yeah, again, more crates, containers, little planes, just little touches of extra detail around these hangars. Then we come onto the main service area where I have roughed up the texture, like it's not maintained as well as the rest of the airport. And then just stacked up so many different vehicles, added a few of the little sim props as well to make it feel a little bit more alive, even though they're not actually walking. Lots of the catering trucks stacked up here, all the baggage carts, the stairs, some crates for like various different amenities when you're on the plane. Again, more kind of containers with a little bit of rubbish, a little bit roughed up, you are sim props there as well around that area. And then we come on to all of the baggage loaders and the cargo loaders there. All of the de-icers and the pushbacks and various different uh, belt loaders and yeah, all that kind of thing, service maintenance vehicles. And we've used a little bit of line detailing around it, just like I saw in Newcastle Airport. So I think that gives it quite a nice effect. And then for these parked plane areas, we have used some of the stop bar props from the workshop, which again, you can find in my asset list and various different stair props just kind of grouped around this pushbacks. It's all kind of randomized. We've got a little belt loader here with the luggage truck just coming in, guy directing him in right there. <laughs> Another guy here with the coach of the people who are driving out to this aeroplane. We've got the stairs obviously lined up to the aeroplane doors there. I think that's like quite a nice little touch. Use a couple of concrete slabs as well to mark out these places. Again, when I was looking on Google Earth, that seemed to be what the case was at Newcastle Airport. And I think it adds quite a nice sort of touch to it. You can see a bit more clearly where the plane stops are. Yeah, happy with that. And then around the airport as well, we have added in a few areas with a few different catering trucks here few police cars as well there's quite a few police cars dotted around in random places and then a load of the buses so we can imagine like people might come out of one of these doors onto the buses to take them out to the planes which aren't connected to the terminal there and then again it's more of the same around here i've kept it very very open and simple so we just added a little truck and a couple of those little transporter vehicles as if people have parked up here by the air traffic control tower and then again all the same around here we go on to more catering trucks, more police cars, small planes, and a couple of helicopter stops at this end of the airport. But really that was kind of it. I've tidied up the trees a little bit around the surface, but I've left a lot of green open space as you would ordinarily see in airports. And yeah, I think it's, I think it's come together. I think it's come together all right. It was an awful, awful lot of detailing and you won't have seen a lot of it in that time lapse. So I hope I've kind of gone over most of it and shown you that here. One thing I did forget and you won't have seen actually is I have merged in some ledger buildings into the bottom of this hotel just to kind of give it a slightly nicer funk front. So we've got a beauty salon, karaoke bar, a little restaurant down here merged into the side of these three merged budget hotels, which I think looks quite nice. It's kind of quite a nice complex now. A couple of little benches out here as well so they can kind of sit and look over the treetops. See the planes coming in? Not quite landing from there, but it's a decent enough view. But I think actually now that is really it for this side of the passenger airport. So there's still an awful lot of work to do on the cargo airport, which will sit in here and tidy up this runway alongside it. But yeah, that's, that's our passenger airport in. And also just to point out that we have now reached level three and we've got an insane amount of passengers going in. I mean, it took me a really long time to do this. So the game has been running an awful long time, but it is actually making money as well. Like I actually looked at our budget. It may not be the case now because it's just dropped, but we were actually making money on transport, which we still are, which I don't think I've ever seen in the game before. Definitely not had an, as large a city with an airport DLC airport like this. So maybe that is the thing that is helping here, but yeah, super pleased with that. 86,000 income from the aeroplanes, that is definitely what is driving it. But for today, that is going to be it. If you have got name suggestions for the airport, please do drop them in the comments below. Keen to give this a really cool Oridan vibe name, and we'll do that in a future episode. Up next will be the cargo airport, so we've finished off this area. 
And if you have enjoyed the episode, likes, comments, shares are all really, really appreciated. I'm so grateful for all the love that has surrounded Oregon so far. And I know you guys have waited a really long time for the airport, so I hope it was worth it. But that is all from me for today. So thank you so much for tuning in and I'll catch you next time. Bye bye.